All right, welcome to this middle school physical education presentation on the principles of training. I am super excited to teach you these new concepts so that you can take them into the real world and apply them to becoming incredibly fit human beings. So why are we even going to talk about these fitness principles in the first place? Well, A, we're going to talk about them because they're very, very important just for lifelong fitness, but they're also important because they're required in the California eighth grade physical education content standards that they're covered. Okay. If we look specifically here at 4.1, eighth graders need to develop a two week personal physical fitness plan specifying the proper warm up and cool down activities and the principles of exercise for each of the five components of the health related physical fitness. Okay. So in order to really build a two week fitness plan, you have to understand these principles of exercise. So that's why we're going to cover them. So developing a fitness plan takes a lot of an understanding of a lot of different concepts to build a really good comprehensive fitness plan. A lot of these concepts have already been covered in class so far, right? We've looked at the fit formula. We've looked at understanding the 11 fitness components. We've measured and analyzed intensity. We've gone over the phases of a workout. We've looked at and tried different workout formats. Okay. And we've also been looking at key muscle groups and regions of the body. There's two concepts left before we're ready to really dive into a fitness plan. Okay. One of them is the exercise principles, which this presentation is going to cover. And then a sep another presentation later on is going to be talking about setting goals. Once we have all of these boxes okay, presented, then we are going to be ready to build this fitness plan. All right. So take a guess. All right. When you train or exercise, what are at least three principles that you think are important? There's really no wrong answer right here because this is you just guessing and trying to figure out when you train or when you exercise, what are some important things to consider? Students will be able to list and explain the five principles of training. Students will be able to give examples for each of the training principles. Students will be able to explain how the training principles help in designing a fitness plan. All right. When thinking of the principles of fitness, this is a great quote. Take care of your body. It is the only place you have to live. Okay. It's very true. You're going to take your body with you no matter where you go. All right, so it's really, really important to learn how to take care of it. So the training principles. These are going to guide more effective, efficient, and smarter training so that you can improve your overall fitness, decrease your risk of injury, add variety to your workouts, and customize a program that fits your individual needs. Why is it important to train? Right. Training is a lifelong, it's part of you taking responsibility for your lifelong fitness. Okay. Why is it important to train or why is it important to exercise? Because you want to stay at a consistently good fitness level. Okay. Obviously better weight and health management. It'll help you improve your performance as an athlete. It's going to make regular life activities easier. Things like walking, lifting, carrying, pushing, pulling, all of those things. Okay. It's going to make you feel a lot better about yourself. If you have good weight management and health management, you're just going to have good self-esteem. You're going to be very proud of the work that you're putting in. You're going to be more motivated to do active activities. Running could lead into mountaineering. Mountaineering could lead into triathlons. Triathlons could lead into, lead into scuba diving. All kinds of different things you can do. Okay. And there's just so many other benefits of being healthy and training and exercising regularly. All right. 
So how do you train smart? Right. Unfortunately, a lot of people, adults that train, do not train smart. And they're susceptible to you know, recurring, consistent injuries, burnout, okay, feeling like they're being counterproductive. All right, that's why understanding these principles is really important because they can help guide you to avoid that from happening to you. All right, so let's look at some key words here. Right? So the training principles, we're going to look at overload. We're going to look at progression. We're going to look at specificity, recovery, and individual differences. These are really the foundational principles to smart, effective training. All right? So when we think of the word overload, all right, this principle states that for any adaptation to take place, the human body is required to exert itself beyond the normal stress levels of training. Here's a great example. Walking is what you do in a normal, in your normal everyday life. You walk from place to place. You walk around the house. So that's a very, very limited overload and your body has adapted to that. So you don't really get a lot of benefit from just walking. Okay. But now let's say you start fitness walking. Now you're walking with the intention of walking faster. You're walking up hills. Maybe you're carrying a little bit of weight while you're walking. Now you're adding more overload to your body. Your body now has to adapt to a new stress. Now that it's adapting to a new stress, it's going to be burning more calories right? It's going to be building its fitness level. Okay. Then you take that and you go into running. Okay. Now that's a brand new overload. So as you can see, you need to do things that are beyond your normal level in order to increase your fitness level. Okay. This can be done by increasing the frequency of exercise, by increasing the intensity of exercise, by increasing the duration of exercise concepts from the fit formula. Okay. So that's overload. All right now, what we're going to do is we are going to look at progression. Okay, what is progression? All right, this principle states that you want to gradually increase the overload stress as you improve your fitness level. So think of overload, the example I gave. Okay, so you're you're getting into a fitness program for the very first time, all right, and you're a little bit overweight, and you realize that you can't go from walking to running. So what you do is you're going to go from normal walking into speed walking with weights. Okay. That's going to improve your fitness level. Now you've lost weight. Your body has adapted. And now you can start taking it to the next level. You can start doing jogging. All right. Now you can start jogging as you prepare yourself to running. So that's a progression. It's when you increase your overload stress. You've conquered one level of overload. Now you want to move to the next level of overload. That's progression. Once again, increasing the frequency, the intensity, or the time of exercise. Okay. All right. Now we're going to look at specificity. So what is specificity? This is a principle that says you want to train specifically for the discipline or the movements that you're trying to improve. If you're a runner, then you specifically want to run and specifically want to strength train the muscles incorporated with running. If you're a swimmer, you want to um, specifically target muscle groups you would use in swimming and the movements you use in swimming. Okay. Powerlifting, the same exact thing. If you want to improve in a particular discipline or in a particular activity, you need to specifically train that movement. Okay. It makes common sense. Long distance runners need to run long distances. Power lifters need to train with heavy weight, low reps. Swimmers need to train muscle groups specific to their stroke. High jumpers need to do a lot of bounding and jumping exercises. Okay. That's where you're going to really see improvement is by targeting specific muscle groups and movements. Okay. Recovery this is a big one, All right? Recovery. It is only in the recovery phase, really the days between workouts, that the body is able to change and adapt to workout stress. Basically, what that's saying is if you do a weightlifting day, okay, and you've integrated a lot of weights, okay, and you feel really exhausted after that workout, 
Okay. Your muscles just are fatigued and you can just tell, all right, that you've gotten a good workout. What's happened is, is you've broken down a lot of those little tiny muscle fibers. You've ripped them, you've torn them. Okay. The day you recover. So at the day after you do that workout, your muscles are now in the stage where they are rebuilding. They're getting bigger. They're getting stronger. They're repairing themselves. They're preparing for your next workout. That process is where you adapt. And that is where you really start to feel the benefits of working out. So recovery is really, really important. You want to give your body that time. Okay. Taking days off after tough, high workouts. Okay. Effective hydration and nutrition. You want to do a lot of static stretching. Okay. Keep um, light, low intensity, cool down, get lots of sleep. Right. Those are all very important in the recovery process. Finally, the fifth principle that we're looking at is what's called individual differences. This seems like common sense, but really um, what we're talking about here, okay, the individual differences is one size does not fit all. Each individual person responds to training different, and it is important to find a style that matches the individual, okay? So things to consider. If you're not seeing improvement, that you may have to change your training program. Bodies are structured differently, so find a training program that meets your structure. Diversify your training so you can find specific exercises that work for you. Work with the trained professional who can help you design an individualized program. Don't try to force yourself to do something that you're not really adapted to do, okay? And sometimes it takes time to figure out what really works for you, so you got to be patient. So how do the training principles help you with your fitness plan? Okay. By understanding and applying the principles, they'll help you better structure your goals that drive your fitness plan. You will know when it will be time to progress into new challenges. You will schedule in recovery days because you know how important they are. You'll be able to specifically target movements and muscle groups that meet your goals. You can change or modify your goals based on how you respond to your training. These are all how the training principles help you, right? So on that note, I wanted to thank you for watching this presentation. I hope you learned a ton from it. And remember, to live an active, healthy lifestyle, you want to be able to train smart and you want to train effectively. So always think about these five principles.